Hey guys, I wanted to share with you this uh, new artwork I made, which is personally a favorite of mine. I feel like I haven't made one this good in a long time, which is kind of one of those situations where uh, things kind of just fired off on all cylinders, which was really nice. Um, sorry it's been a while since my last video. I had a um, an ear infection that was causing me to feel ill again, so on top of having the the kidney stone last time, I then proceeded to have an ear infection that made me feel like I was car sick at all times for like a long time. I didn't even know I had um an ear infection. Uh, I just thought I was like great, like another new thing to add to the list. But um luckily it got all sorted out. And I'm back to recording videos. I'm back to making new art now. Um I'm going to be explaining the process behind this one um which took a lot of uh, editing and renditions. So if you're looking forward to that, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, whatever you'd like, leave a comment, it helps out a whole lot. And let's get into explaining this artwork. So I had this uh, really interesting reference for a pose. I didn't want to do exactly what I saw in the reference, mainly because um, I, I kind of wanted to do uh, my own thing with it. Um, First off, as you've been seeing with uh, my artworks, I've been drawing mainly a lot of uh, VTuber type characters. Um, this one was kind of like a, a, a joke on um, Crony's uh, pet play meme we got going around, which is basically a joke on the fact that she uh, she uh, likes pet play, which whether or not it's true or not doesn't really matter. It's It's just a joke. So I was kind of wanting to play into that with this meme a bit. And if you notice looking at the sketch here, there's a lot wrong to start out with, which is why it's good to keep uh, editing and kind of fixing things as you go, because the first draft is never um, the best draft. Um, in fact, like looking at the sketch, there's so many issues. It's like, geez, Louise, I like, was I not thinking? Was I just not understanding what I saw? And the reality was that my issue was I was not drawing guides. I was going in purely on like just what I saw, which works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. But my main goal was to kind of get the breast to look correct. Like, right. Like they have weight. They've got physics to them, you know, just ways that are like, really really um like they make sense and i had to go through a few iterations before i got it right uh so getting the base right was the hard part to start out with and when i went into the liner i had to fix a lot i used the uh liquify tool to kind of fix proportions and like little things that could be fixed that way instead of having to redraw it entirely um the best thing about um the uh liquify tool is making uh, changes as you go and kind of like just saving time. It's more of a time saver. I would argue that um, it, it's it's weird, right? It's like drawing and working with clay at the exact same time. And it's a really fun process. Um, I, I got used to it while working with things like Unity and 3D. I'm still not the best at um, 3D uh, software, but... It, it kind of made sense to my brain because it's a mix of like that 3D uh, sculpting and drawing. It's it's really cool. I, I think Liquify was one of the coolest things added to uh, art programs. And I think uh, learning how to use it is really beneficial. Um, you can also notice here with the sketch that uh, as you've been looking with my latest videos, there's a new way that I'm rendering eyes, which I'm really, really liking. Because they have like a fierceness and kind of this cool... Um, uh, just a cool look to them. Um, the funny thing is I have guides, but like always on my first pass of drawing the eyes, like there's a little bit of asymmetry that's not quite correct and I usually have to fix. So, uh, that, that's, that's typical. Like if it happens to you, like don't, don't freak out. It, it's easy fix. Just put the eyes on a different layer and adjust as you go. So I would like to apologize in advance because there is going to be a time jump. Um, I've been having moments where while I've been taking breaks, um, I come back and sometimes I forget to hit record. Uh, sometimes it's worse than others. Sometimes I like will sometimes go an hour into the artwork and realize I haven't been recording. And that is just like, well, I guess I can't technically post a video on it because <laughs> I am missing a significant amount of uh, information. And it would just be weird not to post it. Uh, so, 
Um, another thing I was going for with this artwork in particular is kind of like draping messy hair, which is a whole lot of fun. And the pet play stuff will start to make sense in a little bit when I start drawing like the, the Neko ears and the tail. Like I said, it's, it's not actually like a real thing. It's just a joke, but um, it's it's fun. It's kind of uh, goofy. So the funny thing about this artwork is the sketching process was the longest part in the whole thing. The rendering was actually super quick and the line art was, um, it, it kind of came easy this time. Uh, I, I had a really solid uh, sketch, so drawing over it was a lot simpler. Uh, if you have a really nice sketch that's pretty clean and not terribly messy, it can make the line art process easier and good line art can help guide colors and rendering. So, having a good system and process that you work off of uh, definitely helps the uh, rendering process and the final product. If you are someone who regularly watches my videos, you will actually notice that I have a system that I do every single time. I, I always put everything in a folder for sketches, I put everything in the line art folder, and then I put the color folder in the line art folder, that way whenever I bounce or render the, um, the image outside the folder for post-processing, uh, it just makes things a lot smoother. So, here pretty soon we're gonna see a big jump, so apologies in advance, um, it's it's one of those things that I I wish I had uh, remembered, but uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, I had to do a little bit of uh, balancing. The character was leaning, uh, tilted in a way that didn't make sense for her lying down. Like the symmetry was correct, but the angle was off. If that makes sense. So yeah, now we're getting some of the colors in, and we're gonna start planning everything out. Uh, originally, I think I was going, to, I planned to have her lying on a bed, but then I thought like this looks way more like a swimsuit. So let's uh, let's put her on the beach because yay, beach scenes. It's it's summer, so it makes perfect sense. I love uh, the color blue, so drawing blue characters is a lot of fun. I'm actually in the process with my next artwork of drawing Gura in a, uh, in a uh, dress that I kind of designed myself and thought was really cool. Um, it, it's not like a completely unique dress, I would say. I'd say it's inspired by things you see in uh, anime, kind of a mixture of like uh, a summer dress and a traditional Japanese wedding dress with uh, a few alterations to make it look a bit more Western instead of uh, Eastern. So... I look forward to showing all that. Uh, I put a multiply layer on top of everything to kind of start planning out the uh, shading. And I started like getting all the basic colors here, kind of planning out the idea for the beach scene. I kind of want her to have like at the edge of the ocean where the water is just kind of slowly going in between the character and the sand. So I thought that'd be nice. I usually zoom out really far when planning out clouds. Um, then later on, you'll see I got a new cloud brush, um, which makes things a lot easier, but I still, to some degree, have to uh, edit the cloud afterward to make it a bit more unique and less uh, uniform every single time. So yeah, that's basically the plan here. And the the jump is coming here pretty soon. Again, sorry in advance for it. But uh, that was kind of the situation at hand. Yeah, I added some blue behind the hair to kind of make it look a little bit transparent. Uh, some ad glow to kind of plan out all the lighting. So that's the basic idea. Yeah, then some color correction to kind of make it look prettier. And there's the concept and sketch. 
So now we're just doing little adjustments to the sketch to kind of make the color balance a bit more. I noticed that the sky was looking a little... Uh, I would say the word would be kind of bland. It needed a darker tone to it. I added a hue and saturation and desaturate everything to kind of test the uh, colors and realize where there was some conflicting tones. And that was the basic plan to kind of make sure I had a full understanding of the artwork I was going to be doing. So we're going to see kind of a cut here and we're going to go right into the line art. So I'm kind of planning out uh, right now, kind of readjusting the uh, composition to kind of make it look nicer. I really sped up the line art here because there's so much of it to do that uh, I felt like playing it at the speed that I, that I originally speed up for everything would be kind of droning and kind of it would take way too long to watch. There was definitely a lot more to talk about in the sketching phase, but um, for the most part, we are getting into uh, just line art. And I think, as I've said many times, line art, it's about refinement. It's about perfecting what's already there. So the goal is just adding and fixing the mistakes and just making it look professional. Um, I've been using thinner lines lately. Um, they definitely look a lot nicer and let the rendering stand out a lot more. Um, thinner lines can sometimes be really difficult for uh, beginners because they're very um, hard to control. Um, even with a stabilizer, you need a lot of precision. And only recently have I really gotten to the point where I can get that precise. Um, and even as you watch this video, you'll notice I uh, undo lines a whole lot. Because my strokes, even though they're very um, calculated, they're not always perfect. But I'm definitely getting a lot better at uh, steady lines and things that are just have a lot more precision. I'm just becoming a lot more comfortable with it. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, I'm adding way more detail in the eyes than I have in the past, which I'm really liking. Um... And if you've been watching my stuff recently, you know I do have an eye tutorial on the way. Um, it's just a matter of now that I'm better, not feeling as bad, to kind of find some time when I'm not drawing to make the eye tutorial. Because it's a little bit of uh, extra work involved when making a specific tutorial. And not in a step-by-step -step way, but in a like expository way. There's definitely a lot of hair in this uh, particular artwork, and I love it. I love drawing long hair. Um, short hair is easier. It's a lot quicker, but it's not quite as fun. So, and I, I definitely prefer uh, having fun and making things look really, really drapey and, like, planning out gravity. It's just so nice to do. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, and people have been asking for a hair tutorial. I'm going to do my best with that. Um, rendering hair, I'm still not the best at. Drawing hair, I'm getting pretty good at, actually. But um, explaining it involves explaining gravity and understanding uh, motion and being able to present that in a certain way. So breaking that down is going to be a little more complicated. I'm going to do my best, but... Um, Hopefully it turns out good and isn't too uh, disjointed or hard to understand. Uh, <laughs> wish me luck because I, I definitely want to provide a good tutorial for y'all that will hopefully help rather than confuse. So now we're going in the base colors and it was pretty much at this point as I was drawing that I was feeling really, really proud of myself because everything just looked so clean. And it was just one of those moments where I felt like, holy crap, like, this one's, like, this one's a winner. <laughs> and uh, even though it wasn't my best performing artwork, like, just in terms of um, of personal, like, satisfaction with it, it's it was really up there. This one, like, felt really good to make, and, like, I did a really good job, and I feel I learned a lot from it, and sometimes that's way more valuable than uh, things like likes or retweets, is the knowledge you gain and breaking through a barrier in art that you previously um, felt like you were hitting a wall. 
So I added an emulsify layer to kind of uh, add more dramatic light to it. I then um, kind of added some saturation to it and made some adjustments. Um, it was kind of a tricky balancing act with the multiply layer because it, in some ways it felt wrong, but in other ways it felt right. So it was kind of a matter of figuring it out. Um, I'm going to keep trying this with future artworks because I feel like it provides a better product. Um, and I definitely uh, also had fun with the hair here. Like focusing on directional light uh, makes hair look a lot better. And I'm starting to realize that as I'm drawing more. So we are getting pretty close to the end of the whole thing really starting to come together. Um, here pretty soon we're going to start drawing the backgrounds. You'll get to see like the cloud brush I was talking about. Um, yeah, so there's the clouds. And I'm going to make little edits to it to kind of make it more unique in my own. Uh, we do some add glow. Everything pop it in. Just kind of make it all pop. And there it is. Thank you so much. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.